In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create this super zoom effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. It's actually much quicker and much more simple than you would believe. So before we jump into Premiere and start to animate this super zoom effect, first we just need to get two shots. We need one wide shot and we need one shot framed up very similar, but just tighter. So you're just zooming in on the lens and essentially we're just going to take the wide shot and create a movement to turn it into that close up. So once you've got that, let's jump into Adobe Premiere and let's complete this effect. So once you've got your two video clips imported into Adobe Premiere Pro, you can see this is my wide and this is my close up. Two different shots. All we need to do to marry these together is to actually just overlap them to begin with. So we're going to take our close up and we're going to drag that onto video layer two. Then we're just going to take it back one or two frames. It doesn't need to be much. And then on video layer two, we are just going to reduce the opacity. So you can pull it down to 50%, 70%. It's completely up to you, but you just want to be able to see both layers. So as you can see, we've now got both of our clips sitting next to each other. I've pulled the opacity down and now we just need to marry these up. Now you could go into motion and animate the scale and the position here, but we don't have the option to adjust motion blur or add motion blur later on using the motion tab. So instead I'm going to search for transform in the effects tab. So that should be under video effects, distort, transform. We're going to drop that onto video layer one. Then we're just going to create a new keyframe on scale and position at this point in time. And we want to make sure we're only affecting video layer one here. So we go to position, create a brand new keyframe there. Then we'll go to scale and create a brand new keyframe there. And then we'll go maybe three frames to the left and create a new keyframe on position and scale. Now we're going to go to the last set of keyframes, so the overlaid keyframes. And we are just going to zoom in. So we'll go to transform, go to scale, and we're just going to adjust the scale. Then if you go to position, you can just adjust the position and just make sure that the eyes are matching. This is generally what you want to match up. You want to try and match up the eyes if you are zooming in on a person because that's generally where the eyes will go. So if we just quickly watch this, you can see that is already looking quite convincing. So feel free to clean this up as much as you like, but for me that works. So I'm just going to put video two back in its place. We'll increase the brightness on video layer two again. And that is essentially the bare bones of the effect now complete. But we are going to start to clean this up now. So on these first set of keyframes on that motion, we're going to highlight both, right click, temporal interpolation and select ease out. All of a sudden that looks a bit nicer. We are going to do the same on the second set of keyframes. So select those two keyframes, right click, temporal interpolation and select ease in this time. So that looks a lot better already. Now at the moment, if you were doing this for real, so if you were doing this with a camera and you were zooming in the lens, there would be some motion blur. So we are just going to go halfway through that motion, go to use composition shutter angle or shutter speed and deselect it. Then we're going to pull the shutter angle up to 180 and you can see we've got some motion blur. And of course, if you were doing this effect in real life, you wouldn't just snap in and go straight into a locked off shot. There'd be a little bit of a ricochet afterwards. So we're going to go to the first keyframe on the second video clip. We'll go to transform, drag that onto video layer two, go to the very beginning and create a new keyframe on position and scale. Then we'd go maybe four frames to the right, increase the scale, move the position up, and then we'll go maybe another four or five frames to the right and we can just reset back to normal. So when we play this back, you can see there's a bit of a ricochet. Now it's a bit clunky at the moment, so we just need to speed this up. So we're just going to decrease the gap between those keyframes. And when we play this back, it's looking better, but not quite perfect. I might have the second gap be longer than the first gap. So the first gap's quite quick. Second gap is going to hover a bit more. Now from there, I'm just going to convert those last set of keyframes to ease in keyframes, just so we come out of that motion nice. And again, we're going to deselect use composition shutter angle and go to 180. So when we play this back, you can see this is what we have. 
Now, when I go through frame by frame, you can see the action stops and then it starts again. So what I'm going to do in this example is I'm just going to move the second clip over by one frame. And when we do that, you can see that has made the world of difference. From here, we're just going to put this in its own nested sequence. So we're just going to select both videos. We'll right click and select nest. Then from there, we're going to wait to the start of the point of the movement. We'll drop transform on and we'll go ahead and create a new position and scale keyframe. Then we'll go through to the end of the movement, which is here. And again, we'll create a new position and scale keyframe. Then we'll go halfway through that movement. So the point where the transition is happening, we'll increase the scale, move the position down to its right position. And then we're going to do the same thing again. So deselect composition, shutter angle and go to 180. Now, when we play this back, you can see that's gone even more intense. So if you didn't want it to be as intense, you could just increase the gap between those keyframes. And that means it will kind of preempt that zoom. So it's going to do a nice slow zoom in and then it will just whip at that point. We can also extend the feeling of the blur as well. So if we go into project, go to new item and go new adjustment layer, we can drop the adjustment layer onto video layer two. We'll go through to the point where we can see that motion blur. We'll go into effects and search for blur. Now we can drop direction of blur onto the adjustment layer. And if we increase the blur length, you can see we've got a nice blur effect happening. So we'll just increase that number. We're just going to draw a circle mask around the face because this is the center of attention. Select inverted, increase the mask feather, increase the mask expansion so that you end up with something along these lines. And then we're going to go through to the point where we're halfway through that first bounce, that first push in. We'll create a brand new keyframe on blur length. Then we'll go maybe three frames back and pull down to zero. Then we'll go a few frames after the, after the action. And you can see that is the effect. Of course, if you wanted to, you could also animate the direction. So we'll go to the beginning of that action. Then we'll go to the end of that action and adjust the direction. And now you can see that is going to change as we move in. Point there, less intense. So we can pull the blur length down to maybe 40, 50, and it will be less intense. But there's a lot that you can do to clean this up. But that is essentially the fake super zoom effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro now complete. The most important thing to remember is you just need a wide shot and a close up of the same thing, preferably framed up in the same way, except for the fact that one is wide and one is close. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you've ended up with a really cool effect. And if you have enjoyed this video and would like to check out another one, then please consider watching the videos in this playlist. So hopefully I'll see you in one of those videos.